let's talk about the eigenvalue problem. Eigenvalue is the value of the matrix, which is going to tell us the most important information about our matrices. So if you're given some square matrix, we're interested to find such a vector x, so that if you multiply this x to the a, the, the new vector ax is going to be parallel to the vector x itself. So this is the vector if you multiply the matrix a to this x, and this vector is going to be parallel to this vector x itself. So we can connect these two parallel vectors using the equation. So two vectors are parallel if you can obtain one of the vectors by, by just multiplying the second one to some constant. Right? So we can multiply the x to the constant, and this is going to be equal to the a multiplied to the x, since the x is parallel to the ax. So here in this equation, this lambda is going to be called the eigenvalue of the matrix, and this x is going to be called the eigenvector of this matrix a. So let's talk about how we can find them in general case. So if the a is some square matrix, how we can obtain the lambda or the x. So we can't use the Gauss elimination anymore in order to solve the system because the x vector, which is the unknown vector, is involved in both of the sides of this equation. So let's put this side, this multiplication lambda x is the left hand side, so it's going to be ax minus lambda x is equal to the zero vector. So we can take out the x from the brackets, it's going to be a minus lambda multiply to the x is equal to the zero. So please note that you cannot do this operation because a is the matrix and lambda is a constant. So we need to multiply this to some identity matrix, which is the same size of this a matrix. So now we need to solve this system. So when we are solving the system, we need to look to this matrix and one matrix. So let's, let's denote this as some vector matrix B. So in this case, the We've got a system, bx is equal to the zero, and we need to discuss how we can solve this. So this kind of system of linear equations is called a homogeneous system of linear equations, and it has either unique solution if the b is non-singular, then the system has a unique solution, has the unique solution, So, which is x vector is not equal to the uh, is equal to the zero vector. Sorry, x vector is going to be equal to the zero, and which is going to be the unique solution. So, what does it mean that the b is non-singular? The b is non-singular. It means that its columns are independent, and in this case, the only way to make this equation to be equal to the zero is to choose this x to be equal to the zero. So, let's do some example. So, let's say the t vectors one and t two and four are dependent because you can obtain you can obtain the second vector by just multiplying the first vector to some constant t, where we multiply the second vector to the one. So we can so in this case these two vectors are called the dependent vectors. So please note that we can put both of these vectors to one side. It's going to be one t t four multiply it as a t and minus 1, and this is equal to 0, 0. So the t vectors are dependent. It, it means that you can obtain the second vector by just multiplying the first one to some constant, or at the same time, it means that it is possible to combine these t vectors with a non-zero coefficient so that their sum is equal to the, to the zero vector. And this is possible only for the dependent vectors. So when we're talking about the independent vectors, for example, 1, 2, and 3, and 4, so we can't obtain the second vector by just multiplying the first vector to the constant, right? So except the 0 and 0 case. So if you put both of these vectors to, so they are not equal. So if you put both of them vectors to one side, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, is equal to 0, 0. And if we ask ourselves which combination of these two vectors we need to choose so that this is equal to the 0, the answer is 0 and 0. This is the only case when the combination of these two vectors becomes a 0 vector. So please note that we can write down this combination as a matrix multiplication. So it's going to be 1, 2, it's going to be the first column of the matrix, 2, 4 is the second column multiplied to the 
t minus 1, and that's equal to the 0 and 0. And here it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, multiplied to the 0, 0, and this is equal to the 0 and 0. So please note that this matrix equation and this one is very much similar to bx is equal to the 0. So when we're talking about the b, which is not singular, where its columns are independent, the only way to make this multiplication to be equal to the 0 is when we choose this vector as a 0 vector, because of this combination is equal to the 0 only in the case when we multiply those vectors to the 0. So we are not interested to find a 0 eigenvectors, right? So from this equation, from the beginning, it was clear that we could choose the eigenvectors as 0 vectors, and this equation works always. We're interested to find the non-zero vectors, x, right? So it appears it is possible that this multiplication bx is equal to the 0 for the non-zero matrix b, and non-zero vector x, as in this case, right? So this matrix B is non-zero, so this vector x is non-zero, but their multiplication is equal to the zero. And this happens when this B is singular. Basically, some of the columns of this B are dependent. So let B is singular. It means that there exists there exists a non-zero vector x so that b multiplied to the x is equal to the zero vector. So, the, so in order to have this non-zero vector x so that this multiplication is equal to the zero, b should be singular. It means that b should not be invertible. It means that determinant of this matrix b should be equal to the zero. So please note that this matrix b was a minus lambda multiplied to the identity, and its determinant should be equal to the zero. So this equation is called characteristic equation, and we're going to solve this in order to find the eigenvalues.